So, how uh, shall I present you to our readers? Who is uh, Charlie Oakley? That's uh, something I would rather other people decide. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an itinerant, I'm a vagrant, a uh, travel channel presenter. I used to go all over the world showcasing countries, and I came here in 2010 and fell in love with Romania mm -hmm. uh, in a massive way. So I kept coming back, and I made a show called Wild Carpathia, and then we made three more, or two more, uh, at that time. And then I raised money with a crowdfunding campaign to do Wild Carpathia 4, and then we got uh, funding to do Flavors of Romania Season 1, which was uh, huge. Uh, we, we started in 2017. And it just sort of took off. Uh, and every time I found reasons to come back. And, you know, I, I met my partner, Juana, who's Romanian here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we kind of moved in together at her parents' house while we were looking for somewhere to live. And we then bought this mm -hmm. uh, from Doru and Rodica, who live next door. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, can we stay on? And so I said, sure, how long? You know, and they said, well, just six months. You know, can we keep our animals in the barn? That was about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And we've now adopted them. Mm -hmm. And um, for Doro, I'm Copio Meo. And he's, he's my adopted dad. And uh, his wife, Rodica, looks after us as well. And we get fresh eggs and fresh milk from the cows in the winter. Mm -hmm. And uh, in return, you know, they live here. I, Pay their, I pay their electricity, we bring the gas, we bring the food, we take care of them, and they keep an eye on the house when we're away. So the last three years we've spent living here in Schoener, mm -hmm. and it's been incredible. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to sell my house in England now, because <laughs> I'm, I'm very much uh, planning to spend the rest of my life living here. Whoa, yeah. that's a commitment already. Well, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's just, why would you want to be somewhere else? Have you seen the view over there? Mm -hmm. It's incredible. They say in Scotland you get four seasons in one day. Here you can get at least that. Mm -hmm. And the sunrises and the sunsets are always different and spectacular. Uh, you know, we have a, a tuba at the back. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the winter when the snow is almost way steep, you can sit in the tuba with a snowhito. I call them snowhito. Snowhito. <laughs> yeah, with a snowhito and watch the sunset. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it's tough. And, you know, we have wood fired central, so I'm out with the axe, feeding the fire, keeping the radiators warm. But it's a beautiful way to live, and it puts you in touch with nature. Yeah, and and for you sure. know, behind us here is Pietro Krailoi National Park. Mm -hmm. uh, we hear the call of the wolf. Sometimes I've heard wolves howling, mm -hmm. and you hear wild boar, you know, in the middle of the night, and <laughs> off they go. And and even reports of bears. We don't see them; they come at night. But uh, mm -hmm. there's always a few less apples in the orchard in the morning. Oh, okay. You know, <laughs> but I mean, it is it's paradise. It's, okay. it's what I think Romania represents. It's it's the last wild corner of Europe. And people have had a, you know, given me a bit of stick about saying that mm -hmm. because they say, oh, but it's not a corner. It should be the heart of Europe. I said, but actually, geographically, it's not, is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and actually, in, in English, corner is a place you may not have noticed, mm -hmm. first of all, because people don't notice Romania. They have preconceptions about it. But then they come here and they go, wow. And they see a place that defies all their preconceptions and all their expectations, and they come back again and again. Uh, and it is also the wildest country left in Europe. Most of the apex predators, the carnivores in, in uh, Europe, have been culled, they've been shot, they've been killed. Uh, we still have two-thirds of Europe's bears, wolves and lynx, which I think is pretty special. We also have the greatest biodiversity left in Europe here in Romania. And that's a lot to do with the huge amount of forest we have. Two-thirds, or not two-thirds, but around about three-quarters of the, well, the largest mixed forest, let's say that, in Europe. And, and that's oak and beech and ash, etc. Um, and so you have this amazing profusion of life here, which mm -hmm. you don't get anywhere else mm -hmm. on this continent. Mm -hmm. And uh, on top of that, um, you know, we also have traditional methods of farming, which have existed and still exist to this day, although it's starting to change with intensive agriculture coming in. But by and large, these ways of harvesting and, you know, cutting the grass and allowing it to grow and the hay meadows that it produces uh, allows for this proliferation of, of flower, of wildflowers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's something that no one else has in such abundance that we have here in Romania. So we're fighting to preserve that, to uh, 
uh, kind of um, provide a sustainable income for people in the countryside, so they can still do that, mm -hmm. but with agro stays and and um, you know rural tourism, eco tourism, there could be a path to, to continue doing that, but also allow them to earn a decent living at the same time. But all of these traditions that Romania has need to be protected for the future of tourism in this country, and I firmly believe this, mm -hmm. along with many other people, including the King of England. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and if we lose that, and if we lose the architectural landscapes that we have in places like this, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be much poorer for it. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people are chopping down houses and burning houses like this or selling them for firewood or floorboards and building something new and concrete in its place. Uh, and, and, you know, you see this in the Maramorish. You yes. can see where villages like Breb and places are now being dominated by four-storey concrete pensions and uh, where actually homestays and guest houses and eco-lodges would have been a better alternative mm -hmm. uh, because those, those landscapes are being lost. And with that, the potential for revenue for the people and uh, the, you know, the future for their children in terms of tourism at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, think, I think one of the biggest problems is education here. And, and yeah. so I think a lot of people in this country uh, suffer from a, a chip on their shoulder um, about their identity as Romanians. Um, that's why they go abroad. You know, they, they, they don't believe in their country. You know, the sense of cultural identity is something that I think we have missing here, even though we're lots of different cultures. You know, we need to respect each other's cultural differences. You know, we need to respect... We have a lot of uh, Roma here. We have a lot of Hungarians and Romanians and, and Lipovans and everybody. They're all very segregated. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yet, actually, you know, we live under one flag. It's, as I say in the, the new series, um, some people are going to hate me for saying this, but it's the truth. Uh, in, in Great Britain, not so great anymore after Brexit, let's just just call it Britain. In Britain, uh, we have Scotland, we have Wales, we have Northern Ireland, we have England. Okay, but if you ask the Scottish, you you consider you're British. You're British. Oh no, we me. I'm I'm Scottish. I'm Sc I'm nothing to do with England. I hate those English. I've, but then when you get the Olympics happening, they're cheering Great Britain. Mm -hmm. As are the Welsh, as are the Northern Irish, mm -hmm. as are the English. So you know we we have cultural differences and angst points but we also live in one country and by collaborating more and respecting each other's cultural values uh, we can take Romania to the next level everybody has something to offer I mean I've traveled around and I'm only talking about the experiences I've had with different cultures but uh, you know I've sampled amazing Hungarian cuisine seen the fantastic costumes their traditions their stories their fairy tales their folklore the same for the Roma the same for the Romanians the same for the Lipovans the Polish the Greek uh, the the Czechs or the Slo Slovaks Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, the Germans, the Saxons. There's so many cultural, uh, cultural sort of points in in the country. It's a melting pot, and that's a fascinating aspect for, for tourists when they come here because they get four or five countries rolled into one or more. But also, we're slightly separated. Uh, and, and for Romania to succeed, because it has all these amazing things going for it, like uh, resources, you know, and beauty, and tourism, and everything, it could be such a great country, it could be such a rich country. Uh, we all need to celebrate each other's differences and collaborate together to make this country great, and I really believe mm -hmm. that. We're still divided. We are still divided. Yes. And, and we put petty squabbles and things that happened a long time ago above and beyond getting on with our neighbours. And they may be very lovely people, they all are. Everyone from different cultures, I, I, I met wonderful people from all the different cultures here in Romania. And they're all beautiful people, until you get them started on politics. And, and that, that means, that, that takes me back to my point about cynicism and, and, and kind of prejudice. Which, which is, it, it stems from the fact that many people in this country have a low self-esteem, they feel like they were cheated or they feel they were robbed of land or politics or vision or beliefs or ideologies. Uh, and they, don't actually, trust, they don't trust the government. They don't they trust, trust anybody. They, they don't, don't trust, trust the anybody. Government. They don't, they, 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 maybe they trust the press, many of whom are in the pockets of the government mm -hmm. and twist their opinions to suit themselves on behalf of the politicians that own those particular agencies. Mm -hmm. um, so when you can't trust the media, when you can't trust the politicians, uh, who, who do you trust? And what, what, what results from that is a very self-serving attitude. Well, no one's helping me, so I'm just going to help myself. I'm not going to help anybody else because I can't trust them. 
And we need to get past the cynicism. We need to try to believe in the best in people, see the best in people. If we see the worst, we'll bring it out. Mm -hmm. If we see the worst in people, that's, that's the vision we create for ourselves. That becomes our reality. Mm -hmm. If we see the best in people, maybe even if they weren't very good, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. bring it out in them because they're so surprised that someone gave them some credit and the benefit of the doubt, <laughs> but they actually start behaving in a decent way. Yeah. So you, you have a choice. We have a choice in this country to look for the best mm -hmm. in each other and in this country or to keep slamming other people down, to mm -hmm. keep slamming politics down, to keep slamming Romania down, mm -hmm. to try as hard as, and as quickly as possible to leave mm -hmm. and make more money elsewhere, which is actually not always the case anyway, mm -hmm. to leave our families and our friends mm -hmm. behind uh, yeah. and to be ashamed mm -hmm. of, of coming from Romania. Yeah. And I think we need to stop being proud. Okay? Uh, I was going to ask you why Romania, but I'm not, not going to ask you because you <laughs> explain it. It's it's explain it. Very it obvious. Yes, yeah, yeah. but I'm going to ask you. What did you know about Romania become, uh, before uh, coming here? I didn't know very much. Um, a friend of mine who's a conservationist, uh, Paul Lister, who runs the European uh, um, uh, Nature Fund, he wanted me to come and see Romania when I was doing a, a show for Travel Channel called Flavors of Scotland. Mm -hmm. And I came here and it was, it was presented to me a bit like... Um, Well, see what Scotland used to look like before we shot the last wolf and cut down all the forests for shipbuilding, industrial revolution, clearances, etc., etc. Because back in, you know, a very long time ago, uh, the forest of Caledon in Scotland was covered most of the highlands of Scotland. And you can still see the tree trunks in the, in the peat you know, almost fossilized. And uh, here we, we still have, as I said before, the largest expanse of mixed forest in Europe. And to sustainably manage it, of course people need to make a living. Wood is a big commodity. I'm not saying, you know, hug a tree, don't cut it down. I, I don't believe that. I believe that we have, to, we have to harvest sustainably, but we have to replant. Uh, I was speaking to WWF and other experts, and uh, the, the maximum amount of wood you can sustainably take from Romania's forests is around 19 million million cubic meters per year maximum. Uh, the illegal deforestation that's going on in Romania is more like 30, something like that. And then uh, the legal limit is something like 20 on top of that legal legal extraction. So uh, it's it's roughly, I mean someone will probably call me out on this, but it's roughly 50, 50 million cubic meters of wood that coming out of this country every year when it should be about a quarter of that. Mm -hmm. or a third of that. And also people need to replant. Mm -hmm. But but all, all the resources that Romania has, because it's incredibly rich in resources, can be can be sustainably managed and harvested and used. And Romania could be a very rich country. And we we always ask the question, well why isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. it has so much going for it. And and in terms of tourism, it could be a go to destination in Europe. You know, it's mm -hmm. like areas like Tuscany here. Mm -hmm. Or uh, you know, um, pine forests like you find in the Rocky Mountains. I mean, there's so many different landscapes mm -hmm. rolled into one country uh, that, that it's mind-boggling to me that, that more people don't just, just decide to come to Romania. Because uh, you can have about 20 different holidays here. You can go to the Danube Delta and you can see the largest wetland in Europe. You feel like you're, you're in the Amazon or you're in the Nile or somewhere when you're going down these huge, wide-open uh, vistas of water with, with, with eagles sitting in the treetops on either side you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's it's so extraordinary and and we do have a place i think i think romania deserves to be uh among the top destinations that europe has to offer mm -hmm. what do you think we should do to increase the number of, of, of tourists here well, in we're, romania? we're doing it um i'm pleased to announce that the ministry of tourism has reached out to us we've been trying to work with them for about a decade okay. and we haven't got very far but the new team there <laughs> recognize the work we've done and they want us to collaborate with them so we're making eight new films uh, for BBC World to be shown all across Europe uh, on rotation mm -hmm. um, for several months I believe mm -hmm. and uh, those films will will I hope rebrand the country in the minds of other people when they see it and they'll just can't believe that's a Romania. You know, when they hear at the end, Romania, they're going to just scratch their head. Because at the moment, the preconceptions people have about Romania are not always great, you know? And they're very, very, they're very old-fashioned and they're very behind the times. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this country is, is the new place to go. There's a very good reason why King Charles comes here every year. And the first place he decided to come to after he was crowned king uh, was Romania. And the first place he decided to come to after COVID was 
Romania, the first place he went to abroad. Uh, and I think that tells you an awful lot. He's one of the smartest people <laughs> I've ever met. <laughs> and he's incredibly compassionate, loves this country to bits. And, and you know, this is, this is a reflection of Romania, but also how foreigners, you know, however, whatever station they're from, uh, feel about this country when they come here. Mm -hmm. Did you manage to, to learn some words in Romanian? <laughs> oh, okay, so... Uh, 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 but this is not going to turn into a test, I <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, a few words in Romanian for our readers, um, maybe? Okay, uh, a few words. Um, uh, it's hard enough to just do that in English. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, Romania, read Okay? Okay, thank you so much.